Okay, so uh, we're going to go through one of your mock papers here, uh, and what it says is, Calvin is a new computer, uh, he gets a new computer for his family, he wants to build it, uh, and it tells you the programs that he's going to be running. Now it says he wants to understand what each component will do, and it wants you to t tick the boxes on the right one. Now, just so you know what this is, RAM is your random access memory, HDD is your hard drive, VDU, visual display unit, and CPU is your processor. So look at that, it says display visual output. If that's called a visual display unit, think about it logically. So your answer to that is visual display unit. Storing data. Think about the word storing. What's storing? A method of storage. Well done. Which means hard disk drive. You should have got. Running programs. The TPU needs to process it. Well done. Also, temporary storing data <coughs> for running the programs. RAM. Because the word temporary is what gives it away. Reme what happens... Dan, when you turn the computer off, RAM loses. RAM loses all of it. And what was what is the word that we use? Begins with a V. Volatile. Volatile. Well done. Okay. Now it says state the number of each component next to the and the su suitable explanation that goes with it. So enables more programs to run simultaneously without having to use virtual memory which would slow down the computer. One is RAM, okay? Enables programs to run more quickly and use, and if more calls are available, then allows the program to be executed simultaneously without loss of performance. Think about it, the word calls here gives away what it is because CPU can have multiple calls. So the answer was four. Provides ability to display larger, better quality picture. So the word display gives that away. Visual display units. Then, enable more data and programs to be stored, such as lots of movies or games. Store is the word there. Hard disk drive is your storage, okay? Right, so discuss the different features of the CPU, such as clock speed, number of cores, and cache size, and describe what it is likely to do and why. So, to answer that question, the things that you should have talked about, so display the features of the CPU, are, anyone want to give me something we should have spoken about? Clock speed. Clock speed, good, and that's only one mark though. Clock speed... What, wait, what about clock speed? That's my point. Some of you aren't following through. Good. Mo increases, though. Increases number of instructions per second. Well done, Kieran. All right? Now, the next one that we can have. What's another thing that has an, uh, a factor that affects the performance of the CPU. Now the issue that I had with this question here is that some people left this blank, but it's told you, discuss the different features such as clock speed, number of calls and cache size, just by you actually mentioning that, you've got that mark, but you've got to back it up, alright? Yes. Not that's the one above, but think about it. You said more cores, which means more instructions, all right, per second. There's a key thing missing from that. Yes, at the same time, yeah, or simultaneously. You should be talking about, all right. Then we've also got the cache. Right, the cache stores data 
stores data from frequently all right accessed memory so the bigger the cache it means the more instructions we've got so the bigger the more instructions now just so you know the different things that we should be talking about I'm going to put the mark scheme under the visualizer for a moment all right and when you are studying from this video you can pause this video and look back but right now what you should be doing is making on the paper given to you some key points that you are forgetting so cause if you have more cores, you can do more at the same time, and your performance doesn't degrade. Cores, it accesses, it stores data from frequently accessed memory locations, stores data to be written to memory, freeing up processing, uh, processor for other tasks. But don't forget recommendations. Whenever you've got to do a discussion answer, make a recommendation at the end of it. You can discuss all about storage, all about CPU, all of these things, but if you don't make a recommendation at the end of your answer, all right, it brings your mark down. All right, so maybe a key point of making a recommendation for what the choice is and why will help you out there, all right? So, moving on to the next one. So it then says, Calvin wants to understand a little more about how the CPU works. Describe the role of the MDR through the fetch decode execute cycle. So first of all, what is the MDR? Memory data register, okay. So the memory data register All right. Holds the next, and that's your key word there, the next instruction fetched from memory. All right. Now, that's one mark. Notice I've underlined the word next. All right. Before it is decoded. That's your next mark. It can also can also hold data fetched for execution. That's another mark. All right. Now, notice here it says the memory data register holds the next instruction. Which one holds the current? The current instruction. Yes. The memory address, register. The memory address register holds the current. All right. Uh, so you've got the program counter that holds the address of the next instruction but again the memory address register holds the same thing because it's copied from the program counter into the memory address register so don't forget that just so this is where the next one comes in the program counter stores the address of the next instruction all right address is a key word and next instruction is your second mark so that's one for that and one for that can you please write that down So, on the plain paper, please make sure you've included that. Now, 
We're looking at network components now, all right? These are just as important. State free hardware devices that would need to be used to create a LAN. There are four you could have had, so I'm going to write all four down, even though they only wanted three. So, network card. Hub or switch. Ports. Slash cables. And then also gateway. Slash router. Any of those would have got you the mark in the first box. So, network card, hub or switch. Port slash cables. Gateway or router. Be aware they count as one. If you had hub and switch in separate boxes, they would not give you the mark. Now let's test who can remember what these do. So what does the network card do? Yes. Yeah. What I would say though, all right, connects devices to the LAN. All right. That word LAN is key. What does a switch do? What does a switch do? Yeah. Again, it connects all devices, all right, on the LAN. All right, but it directs traffic. All right, ports and cables used to connect hardware, and then we've got the gateway or router, which is used to connect devices to the internet. Okay. I'm just going to put the mark scheme up there so you can see it and pause it. <coughs> now, they would like to connect LANs from each office to a wide area network. What is this type of to a corporate wide network. What is this called? Yeah. Wide area network in brackets WAN. Now, this one some of you struggled with. What is the difference between a virtual network and a physical network? Alright. Well, Physical, all right, a physical network is based on physical connections. Whereas a virtual, all right, is based on IP addresses virtual is based on IP addresses each machine on a virtual network does not connect to a hub. All right, it, co it connects through the, to the internet. It doesn't connect physically, all right? So, let's go on to the network. Next network question. <coughs> you want to turn over your page?
So the advantages of using a virtual private network Pardon? Can't be traced your that tracing would be more about uh, if you were doing something online that you shouldn't but in this case we're talking about using virtual servers to keep people secure so good that's one mark all right so advantage you can access your network or files anywhere in the world okay now the other thing that you need to remember is it has a secure connection it has a secure connection you can have access to your network from home and I'm going to add corporate network corporate so if I work for McDonald's I could log into their network from home as it is a VPN all right. There's no danger of other computers connected being able to route traffic. Now, the next question, some people got the acronym a bit m mixed up because you looked straight at the acronym instead of reading the company and thought it was like an MDR or MAR. Master Movie Rentals have s several stores in the UK and they have an online streaming service. It says, legal and cultural issues that you could talk about in countries but not limited to as China and the United Arab Emirates and India. Now, We've talked about this before, all right? Now, in certain countries, certain things are not legal, all right? Now, you are not allowed to show in countries like the United Arab Emirates, you cannot show things like pornography. If you do stuff like that, there are heavy laws against those, the people that <coughs> access those in those countries. That's why they have filtering. Do not worry about writing things down in your exam paper to talk about things like pornography and stuff like that being illegal in certain countries because it is something that they look for in the marks all right now i'm going to show you what sort of things you could have talked about all right so to get seven to eight marks you should have given four issues or examples and discussed and explained the problem one mark for each bit, each suitable discussion. Spelling mistakes such as punctuation and grammar can make you lose marks. So, so let me show you some of these legal issues. All right. It is against the law to offer certain content in some countries. For example, sexual content or anti-religious content or content that is pro other religions or regimes. So, for example, it might be that in the United Arab Emirates, if you were talking about Christianity, because it's a Muslim country, they may not be happy with that. These are cultural issues that you've got to talk about. And these questions are actually pretty easy to get the marks if you just go on and talk about the pros and cons. Cultural issues. Muslims con Muslim countries, such as the United <coughs> Arab Emirates, block sexual content or content that is not in line with their beliefs such as Christianity some governments block content against their rules alright think about North Korea 
All right, you've heard stuff said about North Korea before where even on the TV, they only show what they want to be seen. They don't show what's going on in the rest of the world. Um, it was even shown that when a North Korean athlete all right, didn't place at the Olympics, when they went home, their TV footage had actually manipulated that to make it look like they'd won. So you've got to be aware that filtering goes on quite heavily in some of these countries, all right? Okay. Next one. It says, describe two factors that may affect network performance when users attempt to access the streaming service from other countries if all the servers are based in the UK. This one, I think many of you struggled to bring this one back to, to the front of your mind after doing it a long time ago. Pardon? Not server damage. If you so if my if my streaming service is based in the UK, think about how quick it's gonna be for me to access that server. It's in my country. But if it is based say for example Netflix, they are hosting their servers in America, I've gotta go through all of those different ports. Think about network traffic. We talked about packet switching before. Alright? If I've got to go to America that's called latency. It's the speed of my network. So, latency traffic routed outside of the UK will be slower. Okay? Traffic routed outside the UK will be slower it takes time then you've got bandwidth all traffic being routed at the same time on the same network can cause issues. All right. How could we solve this by using peer-to-peer? -peer? Well, if I don't have to go to a specific server, I can share the load around one network. All right. Think about how Illegal file sharing services such as BitTorrent get bits from lots of different places. That's what it was talking about here. So users, users can download parts of the file from other users. in their own country. So that's one. That's two. There's, a, there's three marks we've got to get here. So you explain this shares the network load. That's another mark. This reduces bandwidth. Okay, the next one we have is state a law. Ah, Trisha joins the local MMR store and finds a few weeks later the shop has been hacked and her personal information has been stolen. What's, what act's been broken? Personal information is the key word there. Yes? Data Protection Act. Good. Data Protection Act. Nineteen ninety eight. Uh no, but if you memorize it it will help. Uh because the other act is different. So 
1998 information wasn't kept safe. Notice, you've got to read the whole question here. It says, what law has MMR store broken? MMR store was hacked. Yes, somebody else has broken a different act there. But as the store didn't protect people's information properly, that's why the Data Protection Act was broken by them. Now, the person hacking them, however, what law have they broken? Good. All right. Computer Misuse Act. Okay. We get, we're nearly through this. Right. Cheyenne needs a digital device or some kind of recording to document her travels. She is a backpacker and a trekker, and will of often find herself carrying her own belongings for several days at a time without frequent access to power supplies. There's a key one, power supply. All right. She needs something that's going to last a long time, and she's going to be storing. She's going to be st storing information to re to have recordings to document her travels. What key? Things, what are the three factors that she needs to think about? Battery size. Pardon? Battery size. Battery size? Capacity. Or. Pardon? Yeah, so. Battery life. Oh, Alright, I'll go on to that in a minute. But the battery life is important. Because she said, access to power supply. Well, battery life, if you use a hard drive, such as an SSD, a solid state drive, it uses less power. All right? So you can make recommendations about an SSD and how it uses less power. Uses less power. But also, you can say, she doesn't have access power. Alright? Portability. Portability. Uh, oh my gosh. Alright, portability. So what you just said, the battery size. Size and weight when traveling. I just think I've just spelled that wrong. Um, and then capacity. It needs to be big enough because if she's not going to be able to back up her files in a long time, she's going to need to have a lot of video, all right? For files. So she can't back up in a while, so it needs to be big. Now, system software. All right. What system software does she need? Some of you talked about utilities here. All right. First of all, she's going to need an operating system so she can interact with the device. All right. So you can say operating system. In fact, because I can't fit this on here, I'm going to show you the mark scheme for B and C. And also, Reasons why it's important for a secondary storage. So B and C, I'm going to show you the mark scheme. So here's B. She will need an operating system so that she can interact with the device. Operating system is systems software. All right, we went over that briefly before. She needs device drivers. Device drivers allow you to install hardware and control hardware, just in case you've forgotten that. Power saving utilities, think about it. When your battery on your phone dies, what do you put on? Power saving, Power saving mode, all right? And compression to maximize the amount of storage she has. All right, so then the reason she needs secondary storage is because she may run out of space and will be out of the internet. She won't have the internet for a long period of time. She needs that space. She
she may also want to back up her data in case something is damaged. All right. We're nearly done. As Cheyenne will connect her, she's going to connect her device to lots of different networks. She's going to be a bit secure here, and there are different threats that she could have. So give me a threat, somebody. A threat that might be an issue. Yes. Hackers Think about our lesson yesterday. Yes. Pardon? Right, so you've all... Right, viruses or malware. Think about it. A virus or malware, if she's, on, if she's got that on her computer, she's going to lose all of her files. So she needs antivirus to protect her from that. She's also going to need a firewall to prevent unwanted connections. So if somebody tries to connect to her, all right, well, no, firewall, all right. Yeah, a firewall will stop unwanted connections. And also, she would want to put a password on it. So I'll just show you that again. Virus is on malware. So she needs to install antivirus software to protect her against it. Unwanted connections to the device. So put a firewall in place. She needs to access... She needs access to her device, but if it's stolen, she could put a password or a pin code on before that happens, and that's going to make it less likely that her stuff goes missing. All right? Now, other than potential cost saving, one advantage of using open source software. Give me an advantage, Ben. Um, um, because it's open source, if she runs into problems, there's a community that can help her. Open source allows means that there is a wide community of supporters. That's one mark. Well done. Yes. You can edit the program to use, to, to work to what you like. So the other one as well is a disadvantage of using that is you do not have technical support or updates. So if you have open source, you can customize or change it to your needs and add more. And you've got a wide community of supporters. If you don't use open source, there's no guarantee that it will work or you'll get updates. Okay. Cheyenne is going to regularly record an audio blog, assuming the sample rate of 44K and a bit, bit depth of 32 bits explain how much storage she will need. Well, your answer to this was 15, because they are 15 minutes long, times 60, that gets you the hours, multiply that by 44,000, because 44k hertz, all right? means 44,000. So I think that's why people tripped up there. All right. Times that by 32. Times that by 30. So there's your 32. Divide it by 8. And multiply that by 1 million. And that gives you 4752 megabytes. Now, well, I don't expect you to do all of that sum and then divide it by 8. Do it step by step. So what is 15 times 60? What is 60 times 44,000? All right. They have recently talked about removing this out of the exam paper because it used to be that these sort of questions you would have a calculator for, but you're not allowed one anymore. So if, no, if you have any mathematical questions, though, and you've got to do your conversion between 1,000 megabytes or gigabytes, you don't need to use the 1,024. You will be allowed to use 1,000 because I have contacted the exam board and they've said that, all right? So you can round it down to your nearest 1,000. Last but not least, we're nearly there. Hernandez is setting up a wiki so that people can contribute. Hernandez is worried that the images 
and content may go online, all right? People may publish. So therefore, wants to set up rights so that he has to approve anything before it appears online. One reason he's doing this is because of the Copyright Designs and Patents Act. Describe, describe, describe how authors are protected. Well, they can pros no, they can prosecute anybody that steals their work. All right. Let me just put that next to that. So they can prosecute anyone who uses their original works, or they can seek compensation and removal of the work's images, as long as they prove it's the original work. So this question asks, describe how they are protected. Well, they're protected because you can prosecute. They're protected because people can seek compensation. Now it then says, some images were published for commercial reuse with or without modification. One of this is Wikimedia Commons. State the law that governs such images. You are allowed to reuse images as long as you use the Creative Commons and you edit it. And you show that you are allowed that and you display it, alright? Last but not least, to create... It wasn't very clear in this question, steps that he needs to take to complete in order to set up the wiki online. But it wants to know how to set up a web page, basically. So look out for the terminology and the rewording of questions. They will do that to you. Basically, if you are setting up a website, the first things you're going to need to do is register the domain name. You will register the domain name so that people can find it. You will need to get hosting. So who's going to be my name? Who's going to host my files? You will need your DNS so that instead of typing in an IP address, I type in a domain name that takes me to that IP address. And you will need to install suitable software to manage and run. Then it wanted to know the difference between a MAC address and yes. an IP address. So the MAC address is the address of the hardware, it's the physical network device, whereas the IP address is dynamic and changing. I would also expect you to comment on one being deanery and one being hexadecimal. Alex, which one's deanery? Um, yeah, which one? IP address or MAC address? Good. All right, and MAC address is hexadecimal. And then it talks about an attack where he's getting bots to cause his wiki to be flooded. What are those threats called? Nope. That's the one thing I told you not to do. We're not allowed to say DDoS anymore. We say denial of service. Okay. No, don't use the acronym. All right, because DOS is also a term used for an operating system that Microsoft made. Exactly. So denial of service. So that is that paper. Okay.